will be doing a fuel pump inspection test. As you can see, here's the pin for the 9394. And on the 95, it's a four pin, different four pin connector, as well as on the fuel pump side. So we're gonna do a fuel pressure test without the fuel filter first, just to make sure that it's on that side and it's not a clogged filter. It's one of the steps that you're gonna have to do. That does not outline that step in the manual, but that's a good step to do. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm also gonna show you the differences between the 94 method and the 95 method. Before you remove the fuel filter, you obviously have to remove your intake components, uh, which I've probably done about four or five times this week alone. On the automatic, you will have a bracket right here that has your um, ignition coil. You'll have to remove that. You might have to remove your vacuum actuator. Um, this is my ignition coil here. It's offset a little bit, but normally it would be over in this direction. And that will allow you to get to your fuel filter. You just take up these two bolts here. So let's pull the fuel filter up. We're going to have to remove our high pressure side line here. In order to relieve the fuel pressure, start the car, run the car, remove the fuel pump relay. That'll stall out the car and relieve the pressure. Since I'm dealing with low pressure, I don't even have any pressure in here to begin with. So I know that I'm okay to just go ahead and remove this. Now that we have the fuel filter out, we have to remove the Schrader valve that I've installed. We're going to install that down there on the main fuel line and remove the fuel filter out of the equation. Like so, let me just set that aside. Get a bolt and you plug up the other side of the hose where the Schrader valve is. Theoretically, this should take 64 to 92 PSI. You don't want that bolt shooting out or have any fuel spraying out. And that's if your fuel pump is good, not your fuel filter that's clogged. Make sure this is nice and tight. But you don't want to over tighten this because you can split your hose just from over tightening the clamp. Okay, so we're going to install this. All right, I think that's good. All right, so there's your setup. And you're going to basically clamp off this high pressure side, your supply side, so that it goes nowhere without the filter installed and this is going to test your max pressure without the filter but if you can't get max pressure without the fuel filter it means your fuel filter is restricted or clogged it's not really necessary in my case but i'm just showing you this so that you can detect if you have a clogged fuel filter and get your lead off bottle it doesn't have to be anything special that's your schrader valve good and tight finger tight should be good enough stuff some rags down underneath of it there you go Get your EEC test connector. This is on the 2.0 automatic. On the manual and V6, you're going to, V6, you're going to use this diagnostic box connector. All right, so you just stick your T-pin in your diagnostic connector, and the other side you would ground out to your body. We have our fuel pressure test all set up for max pressure. All right, next step is to switch the key to on. And your fuel pressure should be 64 to 92, and I'm getting about 24. I said 22 the other day, it's actually 24. Nobody noticed that yet, but anyway. Uh, so it's not 64 to 92, and that is direct from the fuel pump. So now what we're going to do is remove our T-pin, and if there's a problem with the fuel pump, this will start bleeding down immediately because this is connected directly to the fuel pump. So we're going to go ahead and remove our T-pin, and sure enough, we have an issue with the fuel pump. That is where my leak down is coming from. So on with the test. We're going to have to do a fuel pump inspection test next, which is what this whole video is about. So um, are you going to have to replace your fuel pump? Well, we still haven't done the fuel inspection test, but depending on how that goes, if it fails, then yes, I would have to re replace the fuel pump. And is that going to be expensive? Uh, well, for this car, a new fuel pump is probably going to be about $100 to $120 aftermarket. If you get it from the dealership, you're looking at a couple hundred dollars probably, and labor, and that requires dropping the fuel tank. Oh. So it's not, it's not an easy process. If your fuel pump is not turning on at all, then, then it could be some type of wiring issue or fuse issue. 
but in my case, since it's just low fuel pressure, there's no fuse that controls low fuel pressure. Either the fuel pump or the check valve within the fuel pump, but in either case, I am already looking at, more than likely, uh, a fuel pump replacement. It's unfortunate. Yep, but there, you know, the fuel pumps in these cars are known to go out. And I mean, my I have an OEM fuel pump in there. It's lasted me 16 years, so that's pretty darn good for a fuel pump is 16 years, so I'm pretty happy with that. I would like to get an OEM replacement so that it would last another 16 years, but I'm probably going to have to go with an aftermarket for now just because they're so much cheaper. Uh, they probably won't last as long, but, you know, it'll, it'll get you down the road and get your fuel pressure back to normal. First step is to ground the DLC or the ground the EEC test port with uh, the jumper wire as I've shown previously. Remove the fuel filler cap, gas cap. Okay, now I'm going to turn the key to on and you're going to listen here for a, uh, a whirring, which is the fuel pump. So you're listening for the fuel pump to turn on. You hear anything? Yeah. Okay. That means that the fuel pump is engaging and that is one of the tests. And that's good. I can smell it too. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the gas cap. Probably the most difficult thing we'll do all day. Okay, this should be a four pin harness with fuel pump side, vehicle side. So we want the vehicle harness side, which is the top clip, to measure A, the left port. So you're going to need your multimeter. She laid an egg. Okay, so now what we're looking for is the the voltage to get back to the fuel pump. So well, we did hear sound, right? Right. But so we're going to do a hypothetical just to help people out here. If your fuel pump does not turn on, if you do not hear a sound here, and that goes for every single 626 and for most cars ever made, when you turn the key to on, you should hear your fuel pump begin priming or engaging or doing its thing because it's loading up. Now the MX-6, I believe, does not have a prime. It only happens when you turn the, the key to the ignition or the start position. So that's something to keep in mind for you second gen MX-6 owners. All right, and you want to get your multimeter. Pull back this right hand compartment here. And this is your vehicle side harness and this is your fuel pump side harness. All right, so in order to get your battery voltage out here, you're going to test the pin on the right side, so apparently that is A, with the notches on the bottom. And I'm over here using this body ground because this is unpainted metal. And that's why our ground signal is fluctuating, just because this is a bad ground. I'm just not getting a good ground signal off of it. But we got, what, what are we getting, 12 about? Yeah, 12.82. Oh, 11. 11. point. Yeah. And 12 is what we had to be at, right? Now we're going to put our 12 volt load test on. And now we're going to check it against our battery voltage. 11.47. Where's the extra voltage coming from? Another half a volt. If your voltage is correct, then you're going to check for continuity between pins A and D. All right, that's good. That was simple. So, um, is your fuel pump working? Uh, yes, my fuel pump is working, but right now we're just doing a theoretical question for others whose fuel pump might not be working. Now, the question in my case is, why do I have low fuel pressure? Mm -hmm. And there's only going to be two answers to that, three answers to that question. Something's going on with my wiring so that it's not feeding 12 volts to the fuel pump which makes it run slower, I guess. I'm not exactly sure how the operation of the fuel pump works, but that's a possibility. Uh, two, there's something wrong with the check valve, which is built into the fuel pump, and thanks to uh, 
I think it's either Zuby Snot or Ammo Power. They both basically said yes, the check valve is built into the fuel pump. Or three, there is something wrong with the fuel pump itself, either a clogged filter or it's just not able to pick up pressure. Um, like I've seen in another video in Real Fixes Real Fast, the connecting rubber hose had a split in it so that it would uh, it would give you flow but not pressure. That's very possible as well. Uh, and flow and pressure are two completely separate things. Um, you might still get flow, but anytime you put resistance on that flow, that's when you get pressure. And if there's a split in a line, then the pressure is just going to bleed out within the fuel pump itself. So that's that's basically all. And the, the last two, two and three, are both fuel pump related. So if it's not wiring, it's going to be a bad fuel pump. And right now, my wiring is good. I'm, it's getting 12 volts. Fuel pump's engaging. It's going to be a bad fuel pump. The previous videos that I've shot have all been basically culminating to this. I can confirm that I do have a bad fuel pump. It is putting out low pressure, and I'm not going to be able to see exactly why until we pull the fuel pump and we can inspect it. We have confirmed that we do have good continuity between pins A and D. So we can go ahead and connect that. However, if you do not have continuity here between pins A and D while the key is turned on and you're getting power straight from the battery, but the key still has to be turned on for that, then we have to go under the car. Dun, dun. Done. All right, this is pretty neat. You can hear the fuel pump running. If you listen real close, it almost sounds like an aquarium with little splishes and splashes. However, I'm not leaking anywhere. That's just with inside the fuel tank itself. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because that kind of makes me nervous. Yeah, alright, so this is the harness that you have to get to, I'm guessing, honestly, I don't know. Oh, God. There we go. Alright, there's your four-pan connector. As you can see from this diagram, checking for continuity along the fuel pump pins in a 93 or 94 looks like it's right on top of the fuel pump housing itself. I do not envy you. That looks like a pain in the ass to get to. But you're going to have to do it as part of this test. Okay, the side with two notches on, is on the top. The side with the one notch is on the left. And you're going to connect pins A and D, which is your top right pin and your bottom left pin, and check for continuity. It's just a simple continuity test. However, getting your hands up in there to get the probes on it isn't going to be uh, too easy. Now, you do this test if you do not get any continuity from the prior test, which was checking it in the right-hand trunk compartment, which would be your driver's side trunk compartment. Uh, if you do not get continuity up there, then this harness is a continuation of that harness, and you would check here. I don't know what the difference is going to tell you. I mean, if you don't get continuity on one, then you shouldn't really get continuity on this one either. So it's just a double check, I guess. Put your multimeter on continuity. And if you don't have a continuity tester, you can do resistance test. And that should at least tell you if you're getting continuity, which some multimeters only have a continuity slash resistance test or a diode checker test. Same kind of thing. Same kind of thing. We're on continuity. Okay. Alright, we're getting continuity. So this test is good for me because honestly everything checks out. But for you, you would want to do that test. And if you get no continuity on this, this is the very last test you do before you drop your fuel pump. So if you fail this test, you drop and replace your fuel pump. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to have to drop my fuel pump anyway, but my fuel pump is not dead. It's still faulty and, need to, and needs to be replaced, but it's not dead. i have shown you some diagnostic steps and giving you some tools that you can work with along the way. Or the next video is going to be dropping the fuel tank. And yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. That'll be so much fun. No, I won't. It's actually pretty dangerous too. Dangerous manger. Dangerous is my middle name. I'm Batman. And I would like to thank my cohort Caleb for aiding me in uh, this test. 
he was of national importance. It is a very good idea to get someone to help you if you're going to be doing this kind of test because you need to turn the key on and check for your fuel pump operation. Caleb's always right there in a couple of my videos. Been very helpful. And filming chickens. He's good at that. That's and boats. Specialty. And boats. Yeah. So that's the end of the fuel pump inspection test. Next step is dropping the fuel tank. Cool.